These are replacement shifter cables and they are going in our Porsche Boxster 986 and it's a uh, Boxster S. Now install for this, uh, pretty sure it's the same for a 996 and early 997s, but later 997s a little bit different because from what I've seen, one of the shifter cables goes on one side of the transmission and one on the other. No big deal, but just I'm sure there's enough, there's enough videos for you to check on that. What do we have? Now we've already installed the numeric shifter. So you can see our video on that. And we'll be running it with, we ran it for a couple of days here with the standard cables just to see what it felt like. And I didn't, uh, you know, want to just, I didn't have the time to install the rest. So we're going to now put the cables in and finish the package off. Now the cables you can get as a kit that come with the shifter as well. It comes with the cables and some, that is heavy tubing that uh, you can slice and slide over the cable to give it a bit more insulation so you don't have any vibration. So, you know, our exhaust is pretty loud, our suspension's pretty firm, so not really too much issue. If you have like a 911 turbo, like we have in Canada, uh, we're installing a set on there, we'll be running those cables for sure. It also comes with, there's our old setup there. Um, where is it? This. It comes with a, a wrench, and we'll see what that does in a minute, because basically that just hold is a wrench that comes with the kit to hold the cables. Pretty handy. Uh, you also see a packet of little plastic clips to adapt the ends of the shift linkage and gearbox linkage to fit the ends on here. So pretty good. They're labeled with the transmission end or shifter end. First step on, like many, jack up the car. So jack it up nice and secure. So I've got that. No, I did not jack it up off the middle brace, but I have it there just in case things move. But I have my jack stands in. There's heaps of videos on how to jack up your car. So have a look at those and put the roof in service position. You can see that there. There's a heap of videos on that. We've got one. I'll just link it up the top. You can have a look. And removing and accessing your engine. Uh, not hard at all, especially on the 986. Twist a bunch of locks under the carpet piece, pop the top off. Same goes for inside. You've got a piece of carpet here, remove that. And then the metal piece that sits there, uh, it's a bunch of 10 mil bolts. You just, and a couple nuts, you pull that off. Now we're gonna hop in the car because we need to do a couple things in here first to free up the cables to pull them out through the back end. So to disconnect the cables, well, if you've already taken out your shifter and haven't installed your shifter already, they're already disconnected, which is easy, but we need to remove the emergency brake, the parking brake. So 13 mil bolts. I'm looking to see what we got here. There's only a couple. So we'll take those out and just loosen it just because the cables, remember to look at how they run here. One goes in this gap here, one goes underneath. Um, the cables run underneath the uh the parking brake so we need to undo that to get it out and then we'll look at removing it the rest of the way now you'll get the one two three out and then you're going to come to the one that lives under here and you're going to need a wrench instead of a socket but no big deal because you're going to need a 13 mil that's actually pretty tight that one the others are not that tight uh, you're going to need this later, so you need a 13 mil wrench for a few other things. All right, that one came out easy. This one, I actually had to bend the clips and pretty much yeah, break off the clips that hold it in. But you're not going to have that problem if you're doing this all in one go anyway. Okay, so we are out. That's the important thing. And we have the... So that cable is free and clear because it goes outside the housing, uh, the handbrake. Now this one, we're just gonna, I've loosened that. I haven't removed the one under the lever. I'm gonna see if that's just enough to, to lift it up, which, no, uh, this nut has to come off. I missed one. Okay, I'll take that off and that should come right up then. Now I also undid the bolt here. This holds on a little clip that holds the cables together. Um, a little kind of brass looking clip, this thing here. I undid that. It looks like I probably didn't have to, but uh, anyway, it's off now. 
there now do the right way all done a uh, little wire here that's just that's the wire that goes to the glove box latch for when you uh for your lock um now i said we should be able to just lift it up is that gonna be enough room yeah that's enough room so i'm gonna one-handed here There we go. Okay. That's it. Cables are free and clear. Now, we have this little guy. Okay, so we've got a plate here. Uh, oh, there's a clip here too. So we've got to push them out of this clip. They should just push down and out because it's not, it's open at the bottom. Uh, there's another, some kind of cable that goes through there as well. Push that out first and then up these out but i'm not going to be able to do it uh while holding a camera but yeah look it just pushes down and uh and they pop out the side it's like a little like a j so easy and then we're going to have to we've already unbolted that uh we're gonna have to just use some nice clean cuts with the uh with the actually maybe we can pull it forward anyway we'll have a look and can do to get out of here see if we uh we're gonna have to get this off anyway but we'll uh, just take it out and do some clean cuts on it Yep, to get the cables out of the uh, that kind of little brass hook there, it just took some firm two-handed pressure to get down. Uh, that is the little piece that goes over there. And now we've got the rubber boot to uh, to slice so we can get that out of there. I'll probably pull them through the cabin, but I think it might be... Everything I've seen is easier to uh, to pull them out through the, uh, through the engine bay underneath. But uh, yeah, we got to go through and we'll disconnect from the engine in a second. I've got my just trusty razor blade. Try not to cut myself. And we'll just snip this down. I mean, if you're doing a full race car, I guess you wouldn't even need this because uh, you don't care about any noises or anything coming from the engine coming through. But we'll just do it a bit neater and tidier with this. All right, that's cut. Just took some firm, firm pressure with the razor blade, and yeah, the rubber just slices nicely. Okay, now we'll reuse that. We'll just tighten it later, and we can push our cables. We got to disconnect them first. We'll go underneath and we'll disconnect them, and then we'll pull them through the bottom. Now up under the back of the car, you can see that's the exhaust. Back in the gearbox, I got a light here, and if you look up here, you'll see. Where are we? That is the arm of the gearbox linkage and fingertip. That's pointing at one of the things we need to take off. Now, it's kind of blocked by a heat shield here. This is a heat shield. And it looks like it's just got two, one there and one there, 13 mil nuts. So uh, we'll just take that off and get it out of the way. Okay, I undid those bolts and removed it, and literally I've just stuck it on top of my muffler here. Now it is aftermarket exhaust, so smaller than your stock one, but it's stuck it up on top because I couldn't. Yeah, it's not hard easy to get it out of all these little the little holes that we get to deal with here between all the bracing and exhaust and things like that. Okay, so now that that is done, we can start looking at these cables. Now, the these cables, which is uh, good thing. So they're known to pop off and looks like someone along the lines of owning this car, not me, has cable tied them into position further up, which is pretty important. So now we're just going to try to pry them off. So I've just got a big flathead screwdriver. I'll go up here. Let's see if just pop them off. I should just... Come off with a twist. I heard that this is not the easiest thing to do. And you can see all the grease there. Uh, that's just because we've had a sea view boot open and spray the place with grease. But yeah, that's all sealed up now. Okay, we'll keep prying at it and see if there's any tricks to it. It took a minute and it took some back and forth and stuff. But uh, eventually, I got them to pop off. So uh, look, it's, it literally is just levering the screwdriver. You can see it's a ball and socket. 
you kind of get it up on one side. Almost had to think maybe I needed a thicker screwdriver to get it in there, but you can see that's your linkage. And now they're disconnected. Now we have to connect it a little bit further up where they're cable tied in and they fit in a little bracket. I'm gonna see if I can get a good shot of that. Uh, but it's just up, just up past there. Hard to do it because I don't have too much light right now. For reference, okay, tire is right here. Drive shaft is right here. And that, the light is shining on, is where the cable attaches to the chassis. And you can see there, see that there's a black cable tie. Uh, we're gonna have to snip that because that's obviously holding it all in. But that's really just, and there's a little bit of a metal clip there you can just push on and undo. I can't, I'm not gonna be able to film and do the same, do it all at once, but I'll zoom in. There you go, see that cable tie? Well, if you don't have that, you should because these things pop out and then there's these metal clips and show you there so these just squeeze and that cable just pops out and of course the new cables uh there's like jam nuts that lock them in there so with that cable tie i'll cut now and we'll undo these so the clips are just basically i pushed one side with my finger and that was enough to kind of loosen it and there we go so that cable is now out and the other one here so you, it's just see right there that you see that line zoom in again so that's the clip and there's another one on this side and they just sit into a groove in that metal piece there we go good focus on there so we need to get that i'm just ah, can i hold my breath and do it i might have to get in there with some pliers I'm kind of useless with my left arm at the moment after a shoulder injury. That's it. Come on. There we go. Okay, there we go. Cables, where are they? Cables are free and loose on this end. All right, we're back underneath. We're disconnected. And here they come. Now, they're going to get stuck on stuff. So, we're going to go back in and feed them through. Because, yep. I'll just push this through here because that's the one going to be getting stuck on. Yeah. Go up to the engine bay, pull it through there. Okay, there we go. We'll go back under and rip it through. There you can see the how these pop off, it's just plastic there. So Okay, done. Old cables are out. Uh, they are very known for breaking at the uh, at the end of this metal. You can pull it out in here and you can, right where that attaches inside there, they're very known for breaking. So anyway, you can see they have got some sound insulation on these two, uh, but we will be using that other stuff that came with our new cables. You just look at how they, they attach on so they're just that little ball that just pushes through pushes on the peg so we're gonna get the other ones in place and then we'll start adjusting because there is a uh, range of motion on these so i was just thinking about how to feed these through i guess i'm going to start from the cabin and i'll feed them through that way because it's going to be easier to get them 
down over the engine and stuff then uh, and then the other way which is back up over the engine and through these little holes and stuff like that so let's just get them started and again I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this and, and film at the same time so anyway we'll start on the cabin side and put them up and over and down the hole on the back of the engine yep super simple just push it through up over you can do it with two hands you can guide it down and down the other side there now i'm gonna go down and make sure it's in the right spot but uh yeah that's is our reverse which is going to bolt onto there now of course got to make sure you use that washer to uh to reattach the cable onto there and then we'll start adjusting stuff okay the cables both cables are fed through that one's kind of going off into nowhere, but we're going to do the other one first, which you can see up there. Now, we just need to get it into its right little spot. So the first one we're going to do is reverse. And, rev you know, if in case you've stuffed up, well, you haven't really stuffed up. You've forgotten what's what. You've got a lever here that goes, that's got three positions on it. Let me get my hand in there. See there, one, two, three. The middle is neutral. Okay, and then the other little lever up above, as you can see there, that's reverse. So you got to pull it back once, and then you can pull it back, uh, pull it, sorry, forward firmly. Pull it back and you got, so you got, you can pull it back, and pull it back, and you got to that point there. Oh, I can see you to see it, there we go. And then you can really pull it back and that's the third spot, which is like the up and over from a reverse, you know, just like really getting in there. Okay, now we're going to do some adjusting. Uh, numeric video has it done really well, uh, but I will, because I have to do it anyway, I might as well narrate as I go. Now I'm trying to get the camera in here. We're looking up here. That is now secure up in the keeper in the little thing you can see there. Um, you use the wrench supplied and then you hold the back end with a, I think it was a 13, I think it was. Okay, but, um, so this is the arm, the gear shift linkage. So that goes, there's three positions on this one. That's the middle, that's all the way in. Now you want this one, so that the rod all the way out doesn't go to it. So we need to, Unscrew this. There we go. Unscrew that a few turns. We need that to actually go past, slightly past that. That way it's definitely in the range. And this is the kind of adjustment that you need to sort out. And now's the time to do it because otherwise it's not going in gear. So we're almost there to get on. We need to just pass the ball and it's almost, almost a couple more turns. You got lots of threaded material there, so don't worry about it. That. Okay, so we are now, that's now that's sitting on there comfortably. Cause there's the cap, the plastic cap still has to go on there and then it'll stung it right up. So that'll fit on right now nicely. And we can get, that's just, so that's perfect to get fit on, but we want to go a couple more turns. So they say that it's just past it. And that's it, that's just past it. So I'm pulling this. So when you push it in, when I'm pulling it out, it's just, Past, it doesn't quite fit on the ball and socket. Uh, that on the video is what they had, but I think I'm gonna do a one more turn. So now we're definitely past, so the full compression in. That's a different adjustment there, because that's what we're gonna adjust on the gear lever in the inside, but that is where we want it now. Okay, and we want to bring down the lock nut, the jam nut.
and we'll get the two wrenches out. I think they're, I just think it's a 10, pretty sure it's just a 10 mil. So we'll get the 10 mil and we'll lock off that jam nut. Now you can see there, that's all tightened up. Um, way to tighten it, obviously the, the wrench that's supplied, you put on here, but on here, you use a 14 just to hold it. Now that is not going anywhere. We just make sure that is pushed down, the boot there, and we'll get the little plastic clips. So the caps will Okay, there we go. So the caps will go. Okay. Come here. So just double check that. Just in so it goes further than it needs to go. And of course, let me push it that way. It'll go. For, it'll go far enough, farther enough in. That's all the way in, so let's definitely go. Definitely goes the whole range of motion. I'm trying to get my camera. Definitely goes all the way in with a bit of room to spare that way too. Okay, so we get the little cap, plastic cap, and we're going to put it over the put it over here or we put it over the yeah and then we push this onto it that's gonna be pretty firm there we go actually not too bad at all all right there we go full range there we got more in okay that is the one done so we'll leave it in the middle and we're gonna do the reverse lever now same kind of measurement you push it all the way back to that reverse point next to me grab it it's a lever there. There you go. So that's, you got a little bit of movement forward, you got a little bit of movement back, but then you have the, when you really pull it, it gets, uh, goes way back for that kind of hard reverse, but that's what we're testing the length for now. But before we do that, we got to secure the other end into the little holder. Now, from what I've seen, this isn't much of an issue on 911s, but on the Boxster, because I can get that up here. Reverse is in such a bloody weird spot. You, I cannot hold it and adjust the threaded uh, end cap of the cable. So what I've got, I've just got a shoelace. See it there looped around the ball, which is, re which is the reverse lever. So that's the range of travel you get. And then you got to pull it, bump, and then you can adjust, slide it over, adjust away. Otherwise, you are trying to hold the resistance of the reverse with your fingertips and it's just not working. So grab a shoelace or a repeat, some kind of piece of rope, loop it up on there, and that way you can hold it back with this hand and then you can adjust the little cap that sits over it with the other. Man, that is something that, yeah, if there's one thing you can take away from this video, it's that. Okay, now that we're all done playing underneath the car, it's time to play in the car. So we're gonna be adjusting the cables on this end. First off, we gotta tighten them in. Uh, to... oh, I 
just realized we needed to put this bracket back in. Cool. Good thing they're not in and the handbrake isn't in. So yeah, remember that little bracket that goes over the rubber stuff. Same deal is in the back of the car. Uh, make sure the little wires are clear here. We need a 14 to hold it here. And then we tighten these down with the wrench in the kit. Now we need to adjust our shifter position. So we'll take the shift knob off, it's just pulling up, and we'll bolt on reverse. Now that's just that little screw there with the washer. It is a 10 mil. So it should just fit in nice and snug. There we go, all the way through. Now reverse is attached and it's obviously not up and down. It's on a uh, pretty significant angle that way. And we don't want it that far over because that, uh, that's neutral right there. Be reverse. Okay, so we need to get this upright. How do we do that? We use this linkage here and we start winding it out. See, as we go Winding it out, see my hand up above? It's getting more and more upright. So that is pretty straight up. We will go a little bit towards the driver, I think, which is right-hand drive car. There we go, just a couple degrees. All right, then we got two jam nuts lock in here that should be good there before we lock it in we're going to do the forward and back gears now that is going to require the little plastic cap to be put onto here just the ball in here put the cap on it and then we'll put the cup on it's going to be a bit of a firm push there we go oh ho, ho, that is that is tight. First, second. Ooh. Okay, but we're going to adjust this because uh, I don't know if you can see that, but we're leaning quite forward. So let this move. Let's put the tension on this one. There we go. So as we turn it, it pulls it back towards us. Have it so it's a little bit not dead straight up and down, but a tiny bit back, not much, just a couple degrees. Okay, and then we got jam nuts here. The reverse is looking good first, second, third, fourth, 
fifth, sixth, reverse, over and in. Let's check that cup, that's in there. So the play is minimal now. Now you can see here, we also have this on, um, there's three holes, we have it on the highest one, so which is the longest throw, but it's still significantly shorter than stock. And I did that, I did that for one main reason. So when we put the knob back on, and then we can somewhat adjust the height of this knob. But that is the hand width, according to Top Gear, talking about Colin Chapman, founder of Lotus. The gear lever should not be more than a hand width from the steering wheel. And that is, uh, that's nice and close. I got big hands, but yeah, that's that's definitely nice and close. Probably could go a bit shorter, but we're definitely we're gonna run this first. Oh, that feels so good. Yeah, so this is a little bit of play just as everything moves side to side, but man, that's so much more precise. Look, it's probably the best thing you're gonna do. Um, I already drove it with the shifter in. Cables are just making it that much better, and of course, the security of not having the plastic bits that break. That should be the one modification you do to every single 911 or Boxster or Cayman. Now to tighten up these nuts, you get a 10 mil on here, you get a 10 mil on here, and you lock them down. That one's done. And then to, we gotta go do the inside one here. And to get that, there we go, we're in reverse. Same thing. There we go. And we do the same for that one. And our install, well, the installation of the cable and numeric shifter is done. Like I said, yeah, just get one. Uh, they're expensive, but you'll forget about it soon enough. And the shifting feel is fantastic. Just a little side note about running the cables back. So originally, this cable here actually went through this gap. Um, it, because they're thicker and stiffer, it doesn't like to bend that much. So what I've done, I've run it straight through there and then brought it around. Now, it, this is the same way layup. It came from factory, how it came out like this. And um, that seems okay. But the little bra brass bracket that was here that kind of held the cables together, uh, that's not gonna fit uh, as well as the one here that, that kind of holds them. Um, that's it there. It's, it's popped off, but the, it just doesn't really fit. These cables are, are too fat and stiff. So just, uh, no, don't, uh, I'm just not going to put it back in up to you, whether you want to bend stuff, try to make it fit. But yeah, that's, uh, that's not me. I'm not going to put them in there. Our car is super loud, but you do get these hose, heavy rubber hoses to put over the cables to insulate against sound and stuff in the cabin. So we might as well put them on in sections i think it's probably gonna be easier so we've cut cut one into a couple sections and then we're cutting down the middle and then we can just open it up and slide it over top of the shifter cables nicely cut okay let's slide this over the cable tripping over boxes all right, I'll just do this one here and get it started. I guess we could use cable ties to do them up if we need to, get them tighter. The factory ones have this kind of insulation too, but only in a couple little sections as well. It just absorbs the vibration. And it definitely looks more factory like that too, doesn't it? There we go, cable covered. And we'll cut a section of this. Now it's only in, not a lot of clearance down there, but we'll just run it from there to there. We measured a section for that Second cable. Probably use the 
get close to using the whole length of this, but. So it's pretty easy to fit them, just slide them over. Could use a couple, maybe put a couple of table ties on if you wanted to get it really secure, but I think this will be fine. It's one of the only times you'll use cable ties for cables. Uh, now, when I was doing the alignment, I had it angled a little bit to the driver. Now, because we're right-hand drive here in Australia, it's leaning over a bit, and just the internal mechanisms, it didn't have any problems without the shift boot on. And you can see first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Fifth with the shift boot on, there's a little plastic peg, the peg that's holding the shift boot in, is contacting and pushing over. So no big deal, I just need to... Fix that. Yeah, I just need to fix it. So we'll get inside, and that's the, the reverse cable adjustment, and that's what will center it back up more, and that'll be plenty of clearance in, because it's on a, it's on probably like a three degree lean over, and we just need to get it more vertical, and that will be fine. 